Hi guys, we'll start with a broadcast section with no embargo, followed by an embargo section for 10.30pm. No live tweeting during the broadcast section and use the microphone provided, please, Gary. Hello, Andrew. Thanks for your time. Hi, Gary. Um, team news, really. Uh, Sonny, uh, trained on Thursday, I think. it be available to start? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Sonny got back on uh, Wednesday. Um, yeah, did recovery on Thursday, but trained with the team today. Uh, so uh, he trained... Uh, Bist trained, he obviously joined up as well uh, this week. Uh, La Celso trained this week. So, yeah, I, I think the only ones still out are um, Solomon and Sessegnon at this stage. So, so with Sonny and Basuma and to a lesser, lesser extent, La Celso, are they going to be available? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely uh, Sonny and, um, and, and uh, Bist, uh, um, yeah, they, they trained well. Um, Gio trained all week, but he's obviously missed a fair, fair bit of football, so we'll just have to see how he is or whether we give him another week or not. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm thinking this potentially could be the, the best you've been in terms of strength of, of squad players to select from for, for the whole of the season. Yeah, look, maybe the start of the season, first two or three games, I thought we were, we were kind of, when we sort of reference it from, you know, kind of training and that, but um, yeah, look, it's, it's probably the... Sort of the, for want of a better word, the, the healthiest squad we've had for, for quite a while anyway, yeah. That's a nice dilemma then, isn't it? Having a, a problem who to play rather than trying to find yeah, much players to fill some much places. Much more preferable, yeah, absolutely. Can I ask you about uh, Mickey van der Ven? Um, he's uh, sprinted his way into the record books. Fastest player in Premier League history since records began only four years, but that's all we got to go on. Um, I guess you're not surprised. Um, how important is that to you? Yeah, look, obviously, um, we kind of knew what we were getting with Mickey from a from a physical perspective. Um, there's plenty of evidence that sh you know that we'd already seen that he was uh, obviously um, you know his speed and his ability to recover was was elite for sure. It's but then you still got to you know it's not just about running fast. The, from no, I won't say it. Um, you know, football's um, Football, it'll get the headlines. Uh, f football's more than that. It's more than just speed of running. You know, you, you, you've actually got to use that in the right way. And I've been really impressed with just the way he's adapted to, you know, Premier League football. He's up against the top strikers every week. And, um, you know, obviously he's out injured but <coughs> when he's played. And he's just his ability to use that speed in such a, an effective way in terms of his defensive work. Uh, I think it's been outstanding for a young man in first year of and, and don't forget you know before he came to us he's only had one year in the yeah one year in the Bundesliga so there's so much more to come from him but um, I've been really pleased with just the way he's he's gone up to this level and and you know used what he has as his strengths I think I was in the <coughs> Brentford game 10 days ago he's only just really back yeah. from injury do you kind of grimace a bit when he injects that no you, you can't you can't think of it that way I mean it's it's his game and look obviously you know, we had the injury at, at, at Chelsea. Um, you know, and, and there's always a possibility with, uh, <coughs> you know, knock on wood, with, um, you know, high-performing athletes. But, you know, we, we, we had a really good rehab program and he, he hasn't missed a beat since he got back. And, uh, you know, obviously if we had more games in this period or shorter turnarounds, um, you know, probably last week was we kind of pushed it to the maximum with such a short turnaround between Brentford and Everton, but he got through it okay, and, you know, he's, he's good to go. You were a defender. <coughs> Did you have a touch of the same bolts about you? Nah, I was quick. Don't look at me now, to be fair, but I was I was quick. It was one of my uh, one of my strengths. Thanks for asking, Gary. So. Uh, down to Michelle, please. <coughs> Hi, Ange. I don't know how I'm going to follow that up, but <laughs> just going back to Son, um, what kind of an example do you feel that he, he sets the team, given the fact that he had that disappointment against Jordan just a couple of days ago? He's had a long <coughs> flight back from Qatar. He's already trained and he, he's made himself available for tomorrow's game. Yeah, well, I mean, it wouldn't surprise him, anyone to, you know, to see them, him sort of, you know, be like that. Um, look, he was uh, he was very, very disappointed with um, Korea's exit because... You know, they haven't won it for quite a while, and um, <coughs> after they got past Australia, you know, they felt you know, being, when you get to semi final stage, you feel like you're so close. Um, but anyone who watched the tournament, he, he gave everything, you know, he gave everything for his nation, and you know, he, he didn't you know, leave.
believe anyone questioning his commitment to his country. He, he was spent by the end of it. But, you know, I spoke to him not long after it and um, he just, you know, he was keen to come back, get amongst the boys again. And it's great to have him back here. And um, it didn't surprise me that, you know, he came back and he wanted to train straight away and, and be available. Um, you know, that's why he is the person he is. And in terms of Brighton tomorrow, I mean, <coughs> the game back in December was a crazy one, it's safe to say, 4-2. They have been quite up and down since that match. So what are you expecting from them? Yeah, look, I don't think too much different. I mean, I, I know their results haven't been great, but you know, the identity they have, the kind of football they play doesn't change you know, since Roberto's been there. And um, that's why they're such a, a, a challenging opponent because um, <coughs> irrespective of their form, you know that they're still going to go out there and be brave on the ball, play their football, try and dominate. And we've got to we've got to be ready for that. Um, as you said, the last game was... Yeah, pretty entertaining, and I'd suggest tomorrow won't be a dull affair either. And in terms of Roberto, he <coughs> won't be available because he's got a touchline ban. How much <coughs> of a difference does it make potentially <coughs> when a manager's not available on the touchline? I, d I don't know. We all like to think it makes a massive difference, or otherwise, why are we in our jobs? Um, but um, yeah, disappointing Roberto won't be there because uh, I've got a lot of time for him, and obviously, I've got a great respect for him. Uh, but it's kind of. Uh, the existence we have as managers these days. Uh, I think I'm one card away from uh, sitting in the stands, so um, I shouldn't uh, cast judgment on others. So, um, yeah, disappointing you won't be on the touchline, but hopefully I'll get a sail at him at some point. And first of all, how are you? I'm very well, thank Good. you. Thank you, um, thank you for asking. That's okay. Um, Spurs this season have conceded a few goals late on in games, most notably last week at, at Wolves. Um, how much is it now about your team not only getting in front in matches and asserting themselves, but also keeping that concentration right to the end? Um, look, yeah, it's disappointing to concede goals late. Um, you know, it's disappointing to concede goals early. I mean, either side of half time, it's not great. Around the 70th minute mark, you get disappointed. Mate, I don't care. I really don't care. I, I get it. People will want to analyse it. That's fine. Uh, we're always going to be a team that scores goals or concedes goals late. So if people think that, uh, you know, the, the way we want to close out games is by going and scoring more goals. So uh, that's not going to satisfy everyone. And certainly um, the statisticians will, will, will heads will explode. Uh, me explaining it that way. But it's just the team we want to be, and that's still the most important thing for me. I think what we haven't done so far, and what we won't do, is kind of jump at shadows of trying to sort of fix what the current potential issue is. We're still building a team here. We're still building a, a way of playing. And, and for me, that's still the most important thing. Uh, it was disappointing, obviously, like to concede late last week. But, you know, overall, at a difficult place, <coughs> for the most part, we handled it OK. We've spoken about rule changes two or three times this season. I think I, think you, I know where you're going to come from on this. Blue cards, sim bins are, are the latest fad after VAR and possible doing away with throw-ins and kicking the ball in. Where do you stand on blue cards and sim bins and, and is it just time that people stop mucking about with football? Oh, look, I, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't think people will be surprised by my thoughts. But I, 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 I struggle to understand why this urgency all of a sudden to, to, to bring in new things. I, I, don't, I, I'm, I don't know that there's that much wrong with the game as I see it. Um, my biggest issue with the game at the moment is, like I said, VAR has changed the experience, whether that's you're a player, you're a manager, you're a supporter, whatever you are, I think it's changed the experience of football. So now I'm assuming that's a means to an end. They, they think that you know, the introduction of technology is going to get us to a better place. I'm yet to be convinced about that. But you know, beyond that, I mean, I, I don't know why a different colour card is going to make any difference. And, and I struggle with this whole taking from other sports what I do know about other sports is that f most of them are trying to introduce rules that will speed up and unclutter their game we're going the other way and I don't know why because that's been always the difference of I think football compared to the other sports is there's a, a football match always has a life of its own and, and, and within that there's mistakes there's flaws there's you know imperfections and you know, other sports tend to be able to stop and start and stop and start without affecting it. But even that, like I said, I, most of the other sports that I look across at are trying to speed up their game, make it a better sort of spectacle. I don't know why we're trying to go the other way, but again, <coughs> I guarantee you I won't be the one that's kind of in the room when they're making those.
this decision. Uh, and finally, one of the things JR has stopped is necessarily fans being able to go hell for level and celebrate a goal. Um, last weekend, after Arsenal's win over Liverpool, um, the Arsenal team and their manager got a bit of clog uh, publicly for celebrating a win. I've seen you after Spurs wins at home and you go around the whole ground and the, the songs are playing and what have you. Um, should teams be allowed to celebrate wins, big wins especially, without being fearful that they're going to be taken to task for, by the celebration police? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's why we're doing what we do and Yeah, well, I guess we're running out of things to talk about if we're talking about that stuff. Uh, no of interest to me. I think people should be happy when things go well and, un and sad when not because that's what life's about. Anyway. Yeah. Hi, Ange. Um, um, the Mali coach said that Yves Basuma had been suffering from malaria uh, during the tournament. Is that something you're going to keep be mindful of and ease him back in? No, or that's is it not completely right. No, that's not right. He, he had a slight form of malaria before the tournament started, oh. but it cleared up after the tournament started and he had no issues after that. So it's 100% no, ready to go. No, Fantastic. No. Um, I think this is the first chance we've had to speak to you about Lucas Bergvall. Mm. Um, obviously, signed a very talented young man. Is it a case of maybe being patient with him as he ad adapts to a, a new life, new culture, new football, or is he such a talented player you can probably see a, a bit of an impact earlier in his Spurs career? Well, considering he's in Sweden, I reckon I'm going to have to be a little bit patient, um, <laughs> at least six months or so. Uh, no, mate, it's just, he's, just, he's just signed for us and we're really happy to get him in. I think he's a really talented young player, um, obviously just beginning his career, we, you know, Johan and, and, and the scan did probably did a lot of work with him. We met the family, you know, great family, sort of, you know, great kid. And, you know, he's, let's just wait till he's got his slippers under the door here before we start kind of putting expectations around it. Okay. Um, and Manna Solomon, obviously, waiting for him to come back. What, is there any latest update? I think he was yeah, he, he had another procedure on Monday um, on his knee. Nothing major, but again, just sort of, obviously, he had a little bit of a problem. So. <coughs> Probably still looking at another two, three weeks for him. Thank you. Camera switch with George from BBC. <coughs> Angelo, sorry, I know Richarlison's been here a while, but he's sort of Tottenham career's been stop start. But now you've got him scoring and you've got Son back from the Asian Cup. I just wondered how pleasing that is for you and what, what sort of how dangerous a partnership could that be for them two if they click, you know, for the rest of the season? Just how good could that be for have you, them two firing for you? Yeah, look, um, obviously very important. Um, Richie's been – and look, we, we've, we've needed Richie sort of step up in, in Sonny's absence because um, yeah, Sonny was, you know, until he left, I'd, I'd say he was pretty much the informed sort of attacking player in the competition um, in terms of his goals and assists and just his general play. So with him going, you know, Richie's really taken on that responsibility and, uh, you know, as I said recently, not, not just his goals but – <coughs> his general work rate, his, his his general play with us has been really good. So he's in a great spot and great to get Sonny back. And obviously, you know, Timo's getting stronger and we've still got Brennan and, and, and Decky and um, Kulisevsky. So um, it's good. It's good we've got some real strong options in that front third. We're going to need them, um, not just for starter games, but to be able to change games as well, just to, to be able to put players on who can make an impact. I think it's going to be important for us in this front end. And just over the last six weeks, you've had various issues with players away, injuries. Um, how well do you think the team have navigated this this period for the last month? Are you quite pleased with what you've got through? Yeah, it's been okay. Um, from the point of view of you know, the players have, have given absolute maximum, yeah. Um, in terms of our football, it's, it's been okay. Results have been okay. But, um, you know, I'll, I've sort of been at pains to say that, you know, along the way, it's just something we have to deal with and, and we're going to have to deal with whether it's that or other issues moving forward. And I thought the group as a whole, you know, dealt with it, <coughs> dealt, with, dealt with it well. It could have been very easy for us to sort of, you know, fall into a bit of a hole or, or kind of make excuses, but um, kind of tried to maintain our standards. Didn't always reach them, but not, not for the want of trying. And um, like I said, those kind of things hopefully make you stronger moving forward. section. <coughs> Hi, Ange. Um, at the start of December, after Benton Core um, hurt his ankle, you, you kind of wistfully said, I was looking forward to seeing him and Basuma play together. I think you said, I had all these plans. Just wondered if you, you could kind of elaborate on, on how you see those two guys potentially working together. Yeah, look, um, at least there's that possibility now. I mean, you know, we've obviously, you know, 
Bis started the season really well and he had some disruptions, some of his own doing with suspensions and then, you know, Rodri sort of came back and then he got injured and then, you know, when Rodri was up and running, then Bis and Pape left. I mean, it's 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 not just about those two, it's just about that midfield mix. Matters has been out, we just got Matters back. It's just, you know, we haven't had the, or, or the luxury of um, sort of being able to kind of come up with different kind of variations of our midfield setup because they're all unique in their skill set and I think it gives us a real um, you know ability to to tackle sort of different kind of challenges along the way you know we've had Pierre obviously in there and Skippy as well so <coughs> you know I just think for us now moving forward as much as it's great they're available for games it's just the level of our training is going to be so much better and, and, and that for me is always the key I still think training is a, the most important thing part of what we do at the moment apart from obviously prepare the guys um, our training levels um, even today this first day is today where we've had everyone in you can just see that you know um, everyone pushes each other you know the, the, the demands are greater and that just means people raise their level so whether that's Rodri and Biss or like I said Pape or Matters now is getting sort of you know really good shape or Pierre, Skippy, <coughs> all these guys, um, Gio, when he's up and running, um, just gives us more more sort of avenues, like I said, to, to create a sort of midfield mix that, that you know, could challenge most teams. And, and do you see Benton Core primarily as a six or, or, or an eight? Oh, no, I mean, I, I see him as a midfielder who can play, you know, for us and hopefully we're getting away from sixes and eights. Okay, we'll end the broadcast section there and move on to the embargoed section for 10.30pm tonight.